Hello friends, so what we're going to do tonight is a pretty easy problem, but I'm doing this coding tutorial series on potential interview questions for developers, new developers. So uh, let's just get to it. It's basically checking to see if a word is a palindrome. So we have our test down here. We should return two trues and two falses. Uh, this, is, uh, this one is a palindrome. This one is a palindrome. This is not a palindrome. That is not a palindrome. So when we run those in Node, it should return true, true, false, false. Uh, so there are two different ways. Well, there's a bunch of different ways to solve this, but I'm going to go over two different ways to solve it. One is very reliant on your knowledge of the um, basically built-in helper methods within JavaScript on different prototypes. The other is not so much reliant on that. So it's two, two good ways to do it. So let's just start. We'll write a function called isPal. We just want to return a boolean for this. So we'll just feed it a string, and then within that string we'll just return str is equal to str.split to turn it into an array. And then we'll go dot reverse to reverse the array. And then go dot join to join the array back. So that will take the word, split it into an array, reverse that array, and then join that array back for a new string that is reversed, and we'll compare the two and it'll return a boolean. So let's go to node and run this, and we do get two trues and two falses. So that's a very easy way to solve this problem. Totally totally fine, just easy. Your interviewer might be like, well, okay, just don't use so many built-in methods. Cool. We'll write another one called ispal, same way, pass in a string. When we pass in that string, we want to return str, and then we'll split it again to get it into an array, but this time we'll use the dot every function. And every we get access to a, a character and to an incrementer, which is what we want. Um, so basically the functionality of this will be, we want to compare this to this. And then we want to compare this to this. Then we want to compare this to this. So there's a pattern going there. So how do you get, how do you, basically getting access to the exact opposite side of the array can be a little bit tricky, but it's not so super hard. We'll just basically return is is char where we're currently at equal to str at str dot length minus i minus one, and that will give you the last character. Okay, so let's do it like this. Let's go into node real quick, and we'll say. Um, uh, we'll just do an array here of uh, A, B, C, right? So if we go str.length, we'll get 3. So if we go str at 3, we'll get undefined. If we go str at 2, we'll get our last letter. Because since these are on a since arrays are on a zero index, so it does have a length of three, but accessing elements in that array is not this isn't the third element, this is the second because this is zero, one, two. So in order to get the last element in any given array, you have to go str dot str at length minus one. So if we go str at str dot length minus one, what we'll get is that last one which is fine, which is, that's what you want. But in order to keep moving, it decrementing down, we couldn't just get str minus one every time. If we did str minus, let's just say that minus i is at one, and then we still do minus one right there, we would get b. And then if we increment i by one, str minus two minus one, we would get A. So you see how we're going down every time like that? The, the main thing is this I right here. This. So this is going to increment every time. So the first time it goes through, it takes a character at zero. Character zero compared to string.length minus zero minus one. So that's this. Next time it goes character at one. Character at one is this A. str dot length minus one minus one. So you're really going minus two. So right here. Then the next time it's here, 
str at uh, str dot length minus two minus one, which is negative three, which is here. You just keep working your way down. So that should work. Did I run these? Yeah, I don't know if I ran this. Uh, let's make sure that it works. Get out of node. Oh, got a syntax error because I didn't put my arrow function right there, which is fine. Cool, we get two trues, two falses, which is what we want. So there's two different ways to solve the same problem. If you hit them with this one first, and then they're like, well, don't use so many built-in functions, you can do this one. And, uh, if, and you can explain yourself. This is actually doing more work, and it's more code to write. But you, so you can explain why you should use this. And if they don't want to, you know, after that, if they're still giving you guff, probably don't want to work with them anyways. So, all right, take it easy.